Teresa Myers has been a conservator at the museum for over five years. In early 2021, museum staff began the process of carefully dismantling exhibits on the third floor, removing objects for their protection as the museum prepares for major updates to critical mechanical systems. Many of these objects have been on display for 40 years. Over that time, exhibits practices have changed quite a bit. Teresa explains some of the processes she uses in caring for objects in the museum's collections. Check out a couple of her current projects. One of the things that conservators do is we try to understand the object. What is it made out of? How was it created? How was it used? What's on that surface? And, and really try to understand what might be going on chemically so we can design a good treatment. So it's always discovery. These are the um, oh. feather and wedges that were inside the granite exhibit. Mm -hmm. So um, they were, I'm going to guess it's some kind of epoxy that has attached the feathers to the wedge. So it's like these three separate objects are now kind of all glued together. Mm -hmm. And then they use like plaster and fabric and stuff to like attach it to the surface. Um, and I'm trying to get all of that material off before these objects go back into storage. I'm gonna grind it away as much as I can so that I get most of the material off. And then I can, because it's all um, iron, I can heat the whole thing. And hopefully I can just peel that stuff off, whatever it is. All right, so this is the part that I already ground down quite a bit, and I'm going to do some work on this surface. start to see that um, epoxy through there now looks sort of gray so I've gotten through the plaster and I'll probably grind a little bit deeper. And this right here where it's so shiny and warm this is from people touching it in the exhibit as much as anything else. So that's really interesting now this is part of history of this object is that it sat on display for 40 years and people in the museum interacted with it. With this thing, like I could fix it up so it looked like it had never been damaged and never lost any paint and had just come off the factory floor, but that's not necessarily what anybody would be looking for. A lot of times those utilitarian objects are gonna look more sort of used and damaged. And then you have to decide what am I trying to repair and what am I trying to preserve, you know, which is kind of exciting, so. Unlike the way we do exhibits now, um, it was coated with materials to make it look like it was wet and had bits of ice on it um, as part of the interpretation of the display and I would like to get those materials off before it goes into storage. It's hard to see. Uh, if you just like look there, you might be able to see some spots that are shinier mm -hmm. than others, but it's kind of hard to tell what's on the surface. I wanted to show you with my UV lamp how that helps me see what's on the surface. When I shine my UV light on it, oh. you can really see it. It's very clear that there's this material sitting on the surface. But like that one right there, I would not have necessarily noticed all of it. And it just stands out so well. So the, the other fun thing is that when you put ultraviolet radiation on materials, different kinds of coatings glow different colors. 
So sometimes you can use UV to find out what's there, even. Like shellac is bright orange. Um, this stuff, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm finding this exact same color of fluorescence on all the materials from that exhibit. So they were using the same stuff. And that lets me know, it gives me a pretty good idea of what solvents to go to. Every single object is completely unique. And like this end of it could be completely different from that end of it. So you have to kind of sample as you go and watch and constantly assess. And um, yeah, it keeps you on your toes.